Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Bennett Tchaikovsky, and welcome to an update. Uh, this is really a clarification from some of the information that I put out earlier. And I want to thank uh, Vanessa over at the California Board of Accountancy for giving me a lot of her time last week uh, in terms of explaining and making uh, my understanding that much better. So today we're going to be talking about the general and at test experience sign off. Uh, this is updated for May of 2024. So my copyright and disclaimer notice is that the presentation is copyright 2008 to 2024 by Bennett Tchaikovsky and is for educational purposes only. The opinions herein are those of the author only and not the author's employers, um, including but not limited to the South Orange County Community College District and Irvine Valley College. This presentation may contain references to third party websites and materials. Uh, the author makes no claim to the content whatsoever and the usage of the content is for educational purposes only. The California Board of Accountancy makes any final determination as to whether or not the work experience qualifies. And just to kind of say this again, I when it comes to dealing with these kinds of things, don't believe in me. Don't believe other things you see on the internet. Believe in yourself and go through and do your research. My purpose in making these videos is to make your life easier in terms of getting licensed. So how does everything work? Well, the first thing that's going to happen is when you go to the Board of Accountancy and you make an application to sit for the exam, the first thing they really only care about is do you have a bachelor's degree, 24 units of accounting, and 24 units of business subjects. And this is as of May of 2024. That's the only thing they care about when you're applying to sit for the exam. It's $100 fee. And then once you pass the exam, then you also make an application for licensure when you are going through and applying for a licensure, right? This is different than applying to sit. There's a few things you're going to want to see. Have you passed the CPA exam? Can't apply for a license unless, you, unless you've passed the CPA exam. Have you met the 150 semester unit educational requirement? You want my help with this? I'm more than happy to help you. I'm always getting some great uh, questions and uh, I got to make a video on another one too. And then there's an ethics test, which is take home, but that whole requirement is changing. Um, and then lastly, what we're getting to here today is the work experience. Okay, so when it comes to the work experience, and this is really important that what you want to do is you want to talk to your supervisor and just basically make sure they are a licensed CPA. And I would really confirm your conversations and writing, and we'll kind of get into the different licenses momentarily. But when you look at the license designations, general versus attest, your supervisor, if they're an actively licensed CPA, I uh, they shouldn't have a problem with signing off on your general experience. However, it's something you want to have a conversation with your supervisor in advance. I would also confirm your conversations and writing. Just if you talk to a supervisor, they are a CPA. I'm going to show you how to verify that in a moment. Just make sure that they're it's going to be good to go. Also, when you're signing off on general experience, I there is not as great of a risk professionally to the person versus signing off on at test experience. And I'll show you why this is momentarily. And then also to, you know, just believe it or not, there's some employers that really kind of do some nasty things in terms of refusing to sign when they really should be signing. And I'll walk you through what you need to do if that kind of happens. Now, in California, we have two different types of licenses. We have an A license or a G license. What's the difference between the two? An A license is means you have the ability to sign off on attestation or what we call audit engagements. It requires very specific experience. And just to kind of show you how specific this is, is if we look over here at attest, and I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger, Right. So this is kind of the form that you sign in and we look at this over here. Okay. Look at this stuff. Qualifying experience. 
does the applicant have experience in the planning of an audit, including the selection of the procedures to be performed? In your opinion, did such experience demonstrate a satisfactory understanding of the requirements of planning an audit consistent with current practice standards and pronouncements of the profession? If you go from one through five, this is pretty gnarly, right? This is like, you're kind of like, this is pretty intense. And go down over here, anybody related to the firm, I, uh, yeah, this is, I, uh, yeah. And then over here, you're doing a pretty big sign off. Now, coming over here, like, Date of last section 69, but obviously it's, it's something that's pretty much pretty in it's, I'm, I got to imagine that's like some kind of like auditor certification by the CBA. So coming over here, this is a really big deal. And most firms, I mean, I got mine signed off after two years at Cooper's. I was planning audits at the very end of my time being as before I got promoted to be a senior associate, uh, generally and you will want to, if you're doing this stuff, you're going to want to make sure that you're meeting everything. But most firms generally will not sign off on this unless you've been auditing for about two years. So if you're expecting to get an attest license, again, you're probably going to have to do two years. Now, let's contrast this to the general experience requirement. So here's the audit, and here's the general. And if we look at this over here, just look at the difference here. This is just like crazy. General accounting experience may include providing any type of service or advice involving the use of accounting, attest, compilation, management advisory, financial advisory, tax, or consulting skills. To qualify, experience shall have been performed in accordance with applicable professional standards. This is so vague compared to this, which is so specific, which is why most employers should not have a problem signing off on the general experience. I'm going to tell you what happens if they don't, but let's go through and just kind of talk about this a little bit more. And so then right over here, uh, basically the business name and telephone and address. And then you've got down over here, the, the signature of the person who's going through and signing off. Uh, so supervised or employed by me or my firm uh, for the period indicated herein and has completed general accounting experience. So that's a one pager compared to basically the two pages over here, very, very specific. So as we go through and look at this and, you know, going back to this one right here, before you start a job, if I'm looking to basically see if somebody is a licensed CPA, I went on a Brave browser and basically typed in check for a California CBA license. When I go through and do this over here, I basically say license lookup, California licensed CPAs, and let's just go through here. I'm gonna go into our search. We'll look me up. This is Bennett Tchaikovsky. Can't write in accounting professor. Um, so if I write in my name, and you'll basically see this right over here. My license is clear. My experience completed is A, or audit or attest. I've never signed off on an engagement, but you can see here when my license was issued, when my license expires. So it's not going to expire until June of 2025. That's fine. But again, if someone says, that, by the way, they don't have to be a California CPA, but if you're starting a job at an employer and you're expecting to get your general experience signed off on, you better have that conversation with the CPA. Now, I personally think they should be willing to do it, right? Not a big deal. And again, there's not a lot of liability on the CPA for signing off general work experience. Attest is very different.
Okay, now here's the big one. And this is the clarification that the board kind of helped me with is that when you're getting your experience, so if you, I have a student and she worked in, she worked for CPAs in Syria, and this was more than 20 years ago. And they may not be licensed now, but they were licensed at the time that she got her experience. Your experience could be 30 years old. It's okay. Really what it is, is that the licensee can either be canceled or inactive now. I'm not actually sure about canceled, but they could be inactive now. But the question is, was their license active when they sign off on your work experience? And talking with the CBA, that's really what they're looking for. It does not have to be an active license now. So if I come over here and look at Sally, Sally is applying to become a licensed CPA in California in May of 2024. Sally has passed the CPA exam, has completed her 150 semester units, as well as having completed her ethics requirement. No, they'll be changing soon in California. Sally worked for an actively licensed CPA, we'll call him Jim, from January 2022 through December of 2022 for one year, which is the requirement of the license. If Jim is not an active license, actively licensed CPA in May of 2024, it's okay provided he was actively licensed during the period of time you're claiming the general experience. By the way, can part-time employment qualify as general experience? The answer is yes. Part-time dates, part-time hours will absolutely qualify. Okay, so... When you look at this from a bigger picture standpoint, it's very, very, uh, in my opinion, it's very, very open in terms of, you know, it's were they actively licensed at the time. And this is a clarification from a previous video that I made where I thought that in order to sign off, you had to be actively licensed, which turns out not to be the correct. So, so in general experience, again, can be anything. Now, here, what we're talking about is one of the big problems, which is my generation. Sound like a song from The Who, but unfortunately, it's not that cool. So when I was going through and being a CPA, I'm, I had to go through the whole attest sign-off. And because of that, most that are going through and uh, basically, most students that are basically going through and trying to, uh, ba you know, trying to go through and ask somebody to say, hey, will you sign off on my general experience, right? When we're talking about general experience, they start freaking out because they think, oh, my God, Bennett, I had to go through two years and work in audits. And it was like this whole big deal. And let's just go back to the video real quick or the slide. And so they're like going, oh, my God, I had to go through all of this. And a lot of CPAs that are of my generation, they basically don't want to sign off because they think that they have to go through and have had uh, this crazy experience of doing audit when it's exactly the opposite is the case. So. I, what can sometimes happen is, is you can have a supervisor who refuses to kind of go through and sign off on somebody's experience. Now that is considered to be something that if you refuse to go through and sign off on somebody's work experience, uh, that can get the CPA in trouble. Um, and this is kind of how I would go through and, if you if this happens to you, hopefully it doesn't. If you want to send me an email or put a comment below and say, hey, will you can you reach out to me? I think I have a lot of videos with emails on them. But if you send me an email, I can send you back a narrative. But what you're going to want to do, you the board of accountancy is you want to follow the following steps. Submit a written 
request to your supervisor. This goes back to what I was advising you to do is over here, right? Confirm your conversations and writing, right? We're building a record here. So and again, this is for general experience. So you're going to go through and submit a written request to your supervisor asking that he or she complete the certificate of experience on your behalf. And then you also copy the CP, the California Board of Accountancy. Your request should provide the supervisor with a reasonable amount of time to respond. It is suggested that all correspondence need to be sent via certified mail return receipt requested. Now, if your supervisor doesn't respond, do a follow-up request to the supervisor. And this is really important. This is kind of like when you're going into small claims court, the judge is going to be pissed at you if you file, if you did not try to resolve it outside of the court. So if your supervisor still does not respond and you have filed your licensure application with the CBA, remember this is for licensing, you may submit a letter to the CBA that, that the CBA assist you. You need to include when you're contacting the CBA, exhibit A, original emails showing that the supervisor was cool signing off on your general experience if you did it. Number B, uh, first letter showing the return receipt. Exhibit C, follow on correspondence. So you're telling the CBA, hey, I tried contacting the CPA to sign off on my general experience. They refused to do so. Now, once, excuse me, once the following has been completed. So over here, once the above steps have been completed, the Board of Accountants who will contact the supervisor on your behalf to request a submission of a written explanation regarding why they would not complete the certificate of experience. So this is a serious deal because if you refuse to do it as a CPA, it can get me in trouble if I don't sign off on your experience. The supervisor will be notified that any individual, whether or not they have filed an application for licensure with the CBA, has a right to file a complaint if they believe their supervisor is impeding them from becoming licensed. Right. And under the provisions of, oh, here's where section 69. If you believe that your supervisor has willfully failed or refused to complete and submit a certificate of experience on your behalf, you then go through and file a complaint with the CBA Enforcement Division. And by the way, this is the last place you want to go. If this actually happens to you, right, before we say thank you and goodbye, again, if you, if you need this narrative, and I've had people contact me and say, hey, can you go through and help me with this? I am more than happy to do so. And again, this is something that uh, basically I'm really looking to help you become a licensed CPA and the experience is one part of that. So again, if you get something, and I hope it really doesn't come down to this, because once, you know, usually what happens is I had a student back in 2016. She came to me and said, my, my, my supervisor is refusing to sign. And I told her, like, just tell them you're going to have to then go to the California Board of Accountancy and go to the enforcement division. The moment she said those words, which is what you're supposed to do, the moment she said those words to the employer, the employer signed off immediately. So that's what you have to remind yourself of when you're going through and, and doing these things. So again, I under basically under these different provisions, if they're again, it's really about the written evidence. And so I want to thank you for being here with me today. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, uh, please feel free to ask them below. I wish you all the best of luck on your journey towards becoming uh, CPAs in California. We are we have a huge shortage and we're trying to address that nationally. And so, again, this shouldn't be an issue. I hope it's not. But if it does become one, feel free to reach out and I can hopefully help you and provide you some written explanations to help the employer make sure that they're doing the right thing. Have a great day. Look forward to seeing you on future videos. See you soon.